In the year 2020, a red panda and a talking sandwich began a podcast called Chatsunami. As the podcast grew, they began attracting the attention of the dreaded podcast bots. Now, in 2022, beginning their third season, they must make their way through all of the Terminator films. Wait, even Genesis? Yes, even Genesis. Oh, man. Well, at least it's no Birdemic. Welcome to Chatsunami. Hello everyone, and welcome to the fourth and the final episode of Terminator Month. My name's Adam, and as always, I'm joined by the legend, the one and only saviour of humanity himself, Satsunami. Satsunami, welcome back. Thank you for having me, Adam. Honestly, it's a relief being back with my own face, might I add. Didn't have to pry it off another legend. (laughs) I mean, that's good. Didn't have to like get it stretched over your metal endoskeleton. I still can't believe that was an ending to. Not only can I believe that was a proposed ending to Terminator Salvation, I can't believe that I didn't save it for this quiz. <laughs> that would have been an amazing quiz. I definitely think that would have been the one question I'd have fooled you with. Yeah, if you want to know what we're talking about, please feel free to go back and listen to our Terminator Three and Salvation episode. That got wild so fast. Can I just say, usually when you and I talk, and you know when people say, "Oh, I've got a fun." fun fact for you it's all it's never a fun fact it's always like a wild and just like what where did that come from what a wild ride we've been on these last couple weeks and everything as you say like that will forever stick in my mind that somebody thought that was a good way to end a film but as well like i have to ask you a serious question uh, satsu because i've been i've been worried about you over these last couple weeks and I, i'm genuinely concerned here have you got over your obsession with with covering things in human flesh for legal reasons, yes. Yeah, the red panda's <laughs> nodding. Yeah. Wow. Yes. I am a rehabilitated member of society now. I just imagine your, your house is like Dr. Frankenstein's lab or something now. What was it I was talking to you about? And it wasn't even. That was it. It was Hocus Pocus too. <laughs> right. <laughs> This is why this came up, okay? My girlfriend and I decided quite early to watch Hocus Pocus because she'd never seen it before. And what I didn't realise was that the like magic book in that that has like the big eye and everything is actually coated in human skin. And I remember I texted Adam and I was like, oh look, that book's covered in skin. You could send that back in time if Skynet took over. And that was when you decided to have an intervention of, listen Satsu, you, you can't keep saying these things. <laughs> I have an announcement to make as well. I'm afraid this is going to be my last episode uh, because my 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 partner, after I told her about your obsession with covering things in flesh, my partner said I'm not allowed to hang out with you anymore. So it's been fun. Thank you. Thank you all for, for having me on. It's been a wild ride, but you know, <laughs> all good things must come to an end after it gets covered in flesh. Well, how has your experience been going back through the, the Terminator franchise and through the highs and the lows? How have you found it? Honestly, it's been a delight watching these films again even the bad ones haven't been as bad as i remember them because don't get me wrong salvation's bad genesis bad dark fate bad wow look at all the hot takes i'm giving here but at least i had something to say about them you know it wasn't like i sat there and i just thought these are so bold and i've got nothing to say about this because i mean we've been talking about these films for a good couple of hours an episode i can't fault them for not having inter entertaining things in them it's true like whether whether it be stuff in the film or things around production or it's like the plans for it and everything they, they certainly are it certainly is an interesting series with a lot of a lot of highs and lows and everything and that was funny as well it's funny you saying that like even the films that aren't great they weren't as bad for you this time around because that's what i found as well i'll be honest i was really not looking forward to rewatching salvation and genesis and i still don't think they're particularly great films but i did find myself enjoying them like ever so slightly more and i don't know whether that's just i, I knew i was gonna have some fun and, like discussing them with you and everything and so perhaps that helped as well but like it was nice you know that there wasn't like I don't feel even the bad films are just irredeemable god awful trash I still think there's at least some slight redeeming qualities and there's some fun to be had in discussing them oh no absolutely I mean you and I have seen far worse in oh, the realm yes. so 
of like films. A certain avian film being one of them. <laughs> a certain avian film and a certain film where a boy hid in the Transformer box. Remember that one? A boy hid in the Transformer box? What one was that? Like an electricity, like electrical Transformer box. If you remember the, the beginning of Alone in the Dark. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I remember everything else from that film and I'm like, I remember that bit. I remember Tara reads it then. See, when you said Transformer box, I thought I was like a more Optimus Prime. <laughs> <laughs> like one side of the Optimus Prime box in the middle. <laughs> yeah, when you said Transformer, I was thinking this like boy in a cardboard box with like Optimus Prime <laughs> sketch to the side. Honestly, this is a problem now. We can't talk about electricity in this country without thinking of the Transformers. <laughs> You know, there was um, a couple of years back uh, a comic book written of a, a Terminator Transformers crossover. How would that even work? Well, do you want to know? This isn't actually. I, I, temp- I was tempted to put this in the quiz, but I decided not to. Um, but so the general, the story is that basically the Decepticons like take over Earth and they're fighting Skynet, um, and so Skynet's kind of like the resistance. Like, um, and what they decide to do is they send basically the T eight hundred back in time to destroy um, all the. Oh, what what is it? it's like cyber cyber tr- cybertron is cybertron you, yeah cybertrons yeah so they decide to like wipe them all out basically um and it ends up the T eight hundred ends up like teaming up with Sarah Connor to try and like find where the why, where the Autobots and Decepticons have crash landed on Earth and then it ends up with the T eight hundred teaming up with the Autobots to take on the Decepticons um, but I was just like I was really funny when I read that I was like that is not a crossover I'd expected to see apparently it's like I don't think anybody says it's like set the world on fire but it's supposed to be quite entertaining is that not a common thing though because I remember I took to Twitter to tell people what we were reviewing and we have like talked about a lot of Terminator media there's a game that I've been playing recently called Terminator Resistance and I put out a tweet saying oh I really love this game it might make its way into an episode and then all of a sudden I got a response from someone saying are you going to be doing Terminator versus Robocop. I'm, I'm sure the crossover's awesome, but like, it, it's just a done thing now. Whenever there's a franchise with a robot, are they just going to put Robot X Terminators? Can you imagine the robot from Short Circuit? Oh God. Like Johnny 5 versus the oh, T-800. No. Johnny 5's alive, but not for much longer. <laughs> Johnny 5's not ready for that, oh my God. Well, it's either that or Wally. I mean, oh, that would be no. horrific. You leave Wally alone, you sons of bitches. <laughs> that would be a massacre. That would be, to be Although I'd like if if, e- if Evie was there, I feel like Wally would be okay because Evie does not mess around. On your tread, soldier. <laughs> But honestly, like you're completely right in how it's fascinating how many crossovers there. I mean, most of them are in comic book form, but like it's fascinating how many crossovers there have been with the Terminator and everything. I mean, as you said, there's been Robocop, there's been Transformers. There's one where it's Predator versus Alien versus Terminator. There's Superman versus Terminator. Like it seems to, I saw a good way of it being described is like Terminator is actually a very interesting setting in a way. And it's something that you can actually transplant quite easily into other things. So, you know, you don't have to have the exact established canon of the Terminator films. You can kind of take the idea of Skynet and you know his war against humanity and like place that in other universes so it does make it it makes it quite ubiquitous in that way and it is able to like move into a lot of different franchises quite well oh absolutely it seems like a bit of a I'm going to use my fancy words for this episode it seems like a bit of a tabula rasa doesn't it oh I like that I didn't go to uni for four years just to not use tabula rasa like it, it does feel like a bit of a blank slate doesn't it where it's like dystopian future killer robots you could plant them anywhere. I mean, it worked with Doctor Who and the Dalek. It's a good point. Or the Borg in Star Trek, or I don't know, the Trade Federation in Star Wars. You know, I'm a massive sci fi geek, sue me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you've been listening for over 100 episodes to me talking on this show and not realised I'm a massive nerd, hello, my name's Satsunami. Nice to meet you. The tea bags are over there. <laughs> I suppose like it's that way. I suppose like man versus machine is it's quite an old trope, you know, and it's quite a well established one and it's quite it's one that people seem to like enjoy, you know, and, and still people want to see IPs based on that kind of idea. So I just say it, it makes sense in that way that as you say, killer robots are inherently, I suppose, equally fascinating and terrifying. So I doubt we'll probably see that trope. Especially as as technology continues to like impact our lives more and more. I guess I don't think that trope's gonna die out anytime soon. No, absolutely not. I mean, have you been to the supermarkets recently with the self-serving machines. I mean, if there's anything that's going to tip humanity over the edge, it's going to be those machines telling you that you haven't put in the stuff you put into the weighing machine. Please remove from the bagging area. It's like, no, it's all fine. It's like, it's already removed from the bagging area. (laughs) It's calling security. It's like, no, don't you dare, you snitch. (laughs) 
But you know, do you know the one that really gets me? Tesco have them. I don't know if other supermarkets have them or not, but like you get the extra fancy ones where you get like a you can get a scanner at the door and then you can oh, like yeah. scan up your own shopping. And then you go and you go to one of those self service things and you scan the barcode and it transfers your shopping over. And for the most part, it's fine. But every now and then it picks you out to get like a search of your like stuff. So somebody has to come over and check it. And you're like, oh, you son of a bitch, you machine. <laughs> I think they have them in Sainsbury's as well. And I've never used them because I would be terrified that I didn't scan something. Uh, <laughs> it would be like trying to sneak this copy of Terminator Genesis out. It's like, I swear it's for a review. <laughs> Boo this man. <laughs> Terrifying. They will be on the front lines. The self-service machines will be on the front lines when the robots rise up to wipe us out. No, I, I totally agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> From our discussion of, of covering things in flesh to the, the dangers of self-service checkout machines, are you ready for some good old quizzing? Yes, I'm ready for some, as you said, family-friendly Family-friendly. I promise there's no questions that involve human flesh. Well, there's no question that involve covering anything in human flesh. Oh, man. <laughs> this interview is over. <laughs> <laughs> Storm out. How does it, it feel to be sitting in the quiz seat for once? Yeah, it feels weird because for the last... Oh, is it two trivia episodes we've done so far? Because we did the Halo one and we did the Sonic one. Yeah, I think that's the only one we've done so far. Because the only other one I've done before was with Jan from the Beer and Chill podcast who has done like a couple of the Star Wars episodes. Oh, of course, yeah. I remember I went on to his and he was like, oh, I bet he's not going to get any of the questions correct. I I got one question wrong and the rest correct. I was like, oh, I've wasted my life. You are a smart man. To be honest, I am probably more nervous than you because I'm just like, I've got 10 questions here and I'm like, I bet you Satsunami's going to get 10 out of 10. Oh, bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. You're, you're a small one. You're not easily fooled. That's one thing about you. Like, you can sniff out a liar. <laughs> I feel like so. I mean, you say that now, but I'm probably going to, yeah, let, let's prove Skynet wrong and put the podcast bots into the ground once and for all. Our final offensive against the PBs. Well, with no, without further ado then, I think let's take, a, let's take a short ad break, will we? And then we'll come back and we'll, we'll get some serious quizzing on. So enjoy these upcoming transmissions and we'll see you on the other side. Welcome to Shatsunami, a variety podcast that discusses topics from gaming and films to anime and general interests. Previously on Shatsunami, we've analysed what makes a good horror game, conducted a retrospective on Pierce Brosnan's run as James Bond, and listened to us take deep dives into both the Sonic and Halo franchises. Also, if you're an anime fan, then don't forget to check us out on our sub-series, Shatsunani, where we dive into the world of anime. So far, we've reviewed things like Death Note, Princess Mononoke and the hit Beyblade series. If that sounds like your cup of tea, then you can check us out on Spotify, iTunes, and all good podcast apps. As always, stay safe, stay awesome, and most importantly, stay hydrated. Movies and feelings. Pop, pop. Bring Your Own Popcorn is a podcast that dives into people and the movies who love them. Let us preach to your choir or stoke your ire as we spiral down memory lane with cult classics, jurassics, and other genres that rhyme with traffic. What we lack in education, we make up for with comedy, compassion, and camaraderie. I'm your host, Mixtape Majesty, inviting you to join me and an assortment of wonderful guests on fine podcast apps everywhere. Bring Bring Your your Own popcorn. Popcorn! So, Mr. Satsunami, are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. You had your brain fuel today to prepare? Yep, I had my Weetabix and my big boy coffee. Yeah, I said, you're going to smash this. I, I have lots of faith in you. So, yeah, feel free to play along um, at home and you can always let us know how you got on. Let me know how I do as a quizzer as well. I'm always up for some constructive feedback. He says, like, knowing that instantly the minute I get any feedback, I'll go cry in the corner, but that's for later on. Oh, wait, Adam, sorry, see, before you go on, did you get that notification, the PayPal one for the answers? Cheeky wee bribe? No. Shut up, no. there, <laughs> <that's not laughs> me. We don't want everybody to know this is just a giant, this is just a giant work <laughs> i was getting my shot and i was like oh my god i can't believe you got all these right aren't you <laughs> clever yay i mean yes indeed something something tabula rasa yes <laughs> <laughs> that's the title for this episode now i want to see terminator tabula rasa the tabula rasa of trivia quizzes i'll have you <laughs> But sorry, yes, please go on. Aren't we smart cookies here? Aren't we, we are. smart cookies here on Chats and Army? <laughs> yes, we come here for the intellectual questions, you know, such as, can you wrap things in flesh and send it back in time? <laughs> what happens if you wrap a Terminator in bacon? <laughs> <laughs>
does it cook it? That's the question. <laughs> it would taste disgusting. It would be all burnt and crispy. Anyway, sorry. This is your show now. <laughs> this is your quiz. Before we go down this rabbit hole. Okay, so without further ado, here we go. Question number one. So we're starting right back at the beginning of this series. While attempting to secure funding for the Terminator, James Cameron devised a unique stunt to impress studio executives. He set up a pitch meeting with a group of studio executives and then had actor Lance Henriksen, who plays one of the main cops in the in the first Terminator film, he had Lance Henriksen show up at the meeting dressed as a Terminator. Henriksen broke down the door to the studio's office and then sat down in a chair until Cameron arrived. Right, Satsunami, is this true or false? Oh, that is a tough one. I'm leaning towards false false because I'm sure Cameron had his eye on Arnie for a while for this I can't remember, is Lance Hendrickson is he Bishop? Yeah he's Bishop as well yeah huh. I've forgotten the name of his character, I think it's like Lieutenant Vol- Volker or something like yeah. that um, he's the one who's like he's always like talking to the other guys like shut up to him basically a lot of the time in the film Did Terminator come before the aliens? Or alien? Yeah Terminator came first and I think while they were getting ready to start production on Terminator, um, I think oh yeah because Arnie, Arnie was contractually obliged to do the second Conan film before the first Terminator film. So during that kind of like interlude there, I think Cameron got approached to write the script for Aliens, which eventually ended up directing as well. So technically Terminator was first, but I think Aliens was kind of in the works. I'm going to go with false because if Alien came before Terminator, like I see what you mean, there's kind of an overlap here. If Alien came before Terminator, then I would believe that because, you know, he's Bishop and he does like a absolutely fantastic job as an android but I, I don't know like I believe he would pull off like the scary devoid of emotion robot but to kick down the door and no I'm going to take a risk here and say false it's probably one of those so crazy it's true facts I'm going to go with false for this one is that your final answer? it is but I'm not confident <laughs> I'm afraid to say that's true. It's really? a true story. Wow. Yeah. So I think this happened, if memory says, I think this happened before Arnie was cast. So I think this was like quite early on in the process when Cameron was trying to find a studio to, you know, fund the film. And James Cameron and Lance Henriksen have been friends for quite a while, apparently. So I think he, Henriksen was very keen to help out whoever he could. So they kind of devised this like publicity stunt, basically, as a way, I guess, to kind of Im- like try and impress and show how fearsome this thing could be. And by all accounts, I think it worked, apparently. So like Henriksen, like, broke down the door dressed kind of like Arnie is in in the final film and he just sat down there and then Cameron I think arrived a couple minutes later and it, apparently it did impress the executives but yeah and I think there was I think Henriksen was considered for a while to play the main role but then it kind of like they I think the studio wanted somebody more famous oh, so that's right. when we got names like OJ Simpson and Mel Gibson another one considered but yeah I'm afraid that was a true story no I was gonna ask like why wasn't he considered but yeah that makes sense I suppose it's the same nowadays but especially back in the 80s they would have mm. wanted someone with a bit more star power and of course Arnie was like a huge star in the 80s so yeah no that makes sense I'll take that loss it's fair enough like it does it does sound like an incredibly risky stunt because I can imagine that going horrifically wrong but apparently it worked so there you go clearly there you go take, taking a risk every now and then but yeah I don't think I would ever I would never have I would never have the cojones to like <laughs> to devise a stunt like that and then go for it yeah but at the same time it would take the intimidation factor completely away if he was dragged off by security and he's like <laughs> no Mr Cameron put me up to it <laughs> getting dragged off it uh, would not be the same Terminator I don't think if it didn't work apparently according to some things it was actually quite fr- some of the some of the staff were actually quite frightened <laughs> by the whole thing and apparently I don't know if it's true or not but apparently there was like one thing that like towards the end of the meeting like one of the producers was overheard to be like I don't care who you use the Terminator, just not that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it cost Lance Hendrickson in the end to be involved in that yeah. stuff. But there you go, helping out a buddy. Oh, that's nice. And he got cast as Bishop at the end, so it all worked out well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All righty, are you ready for question two? I am. Being the amazing quiz host I am, like, I completely forgot to explain the rules to the audience at home, but I've got ten questions, and they're all going to be uh, true or false, much in the same style as the previous quizzes that Satsunami has, has given. But yes, so on to question two. So we're still in, the, still in the first film, The Terminator. The first Sarah Connor, who the Terminator kills, lives at a house with the number 14281. This is a reference to the date on which James Cameron had his fever dream where he first visualised the T-800 and which led to him writing the script for The Terminator. True or false? Ooh. 14281, did you say? Yeah, so it would be like the 14th of February, 1981. And is that the way it was written? 1402? 142, sorry. Oh, it's sorry. Five, five numbers. It's 14281. I would believe this, but the only thing that's thrown me off here is the fact that 
that it's not written in the American way. And maybe I'm overthinking this. Do you know what I mean? Because it's usually the... Mm, they do it the other way around, don't they, usually? They do it the month, the day, and then the year. But what was the last number? 80... 81. 81. 81. And when did this film come out? 84. Sounds like something that would be true. Am I asking too much to ask when Piranhas came out? Yes, no, you can ask away. No, Piranha came, so Piranha came out in late 1981. Right. I think it was maybe like October? I think it, I think it maybe came out about time of Halloween. I can check for you if you like. Yes, please. This is this is smart getting all the getting all the available evidence. Oh no, apologies. It actually came out in 1982. Apologies. So it came out in August 1982. Yes, August 1982. Uh, I'm going to regret this. So can I just get that number one more time? (laughs) Yeah, so the number is 14281. I'm going to go with false. I get the feeling it may be true, but I'm going to go with false. Is that your final answer? Sadly. You're right, it is false. Oh, thank God. I went all Sherlock there, going into my mind powers. Like, you see, the Americans would never put it in such a barbaric way. (laughs) Do you know what? I'm, dis- I'm disappointed, though, that you didn't remember that the number is clearly 14295 is clearly the house number. <laughs> oh, clearly, yeah. <laughs> Which I didn't know house numbers could be that long, but there you go, apparently so. But yes, you were completely right. And the more I was like, oh, damn, I forgot the Americans went <laughs> the other way. But that was well done. You found the, the thread that unraveled a whole elaborate conspiracy. But yeah, no, I don't think there's any symbolism behind the number on the house. I think it's just the number of the house that they happen to be filming at. Now I need to get the beige trench coat for... Halloween and be like, ah, just one more thing. <laughs> he come with me yeah. there as well, especially. It was like, it was like, when did Piranha 2 come out? And I'm like, oh, 1982? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> he said it was 81. That's funny, because my girlfriend, you see, she loves that show. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Well done. So, I feel you build some momentum now. I've got one. Okay, that, that's it. I'm, I'm hanging on. <laughs> You know, one leads to two. You can't get to nine without getting to one first. So there you go. That is true. Okay, so we're moving on to Terminator 2 now here. During filming for the final big fight scene between the T-800 and the T-1000, actor Robert Patrick, who played the T-1000, kept ripping his trousers. Allegedly, he went through 15 sets of trousers. Apparently, his trousers kept ripping in either the crotch or down the legs while he performed the various fight moves and jumps. And apparently, if you play a part of the fight scene in slow motion, you can actually see Patrick's trousers begin to rip in the crotch area. That has to be false. Oh, wait, no rips in the trousers yet. <laughs> As I look down precariously. <laughs> please please don't. don't be a riff. Please don't. <laughs> please don't tell anyone how I live. <laughs> please. <laughs> Oh, that's such a great line, though. Oh, that's that. oh you get now you're getting some proper momentum now. You're you're beginning to roll. I was going to say you have no idea how much faith I have in Taylor's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to remember that. I'm like, don't try and fool. That's not really Taylor. These questions, he'll know. <laughs> I'm not a Taylor. I'm just I'm just enthusiastic. <laughs> All right, you ready for question four? I am indeed. Well, let's do this. In 2020, during the 60-minute special about him, Jerry Seinfeld revealed that Arnold Schwarzenegger was apparently scheduled to star an episode of Seinfeld during its fourth season. The storyline was supposed to parody elements from Terminator 1 and Terminator 2, and would have involved Arnie trying to track down Kramer after the latter spilt soup on him. Unfortunately, the timing couldn't line up as Arnie became involved in production for The Last Action Hero. What year did season four come out? Season four, it started in... In August 1992, and it ran into 1993. But I guess filming would have been like probably like earlier 92 then maybe. Like as funny as that would have been, I'm going to go with false again. And I know I keep um, a negative Nancy, but the reason is, and it's partly because, yeah, I'm, I'm not like the soup guy. <laughs> <laughs> no true for you. But I think the reason I'm saying that is because while that's an absolutely hilarious concept, Arnie would have been very popular, especially in the 80s and especially the early 90s. And from what I recall, I know Seinfeld wasn't really as popular in its early run. And it wasn't until about, and I could be wrong, like any Seinfeld historians, and especially you, Adam, please feel free. It was certainly becoming very popular by its fourth season. You're right in saying that the very early seasons weren't the most popular but it was becoming very popular by its fourth season but I'm just wondering if they had enough momentum 
to pull someone in like Arnie. Like, I can imagine in their later half, season six onwards maybe, or even five onwards. Because season four, that's got an amazing episode. Is that the season where it's got the book guy and... Um... No, I think he is actually season four. You're right. It's season three or four, but I think I think it is. I'm sure that's the one with the book guy, Bubble Boy, the one where they think Jerry and George are, you know, in a relationship. Those kind of classic episodes that you think, oh, that's classic Seinfeld. So Not that there's anything wrong with not that. Not that there's anything wrong with that, no. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to go with false because I think although that would have been hilarious, I feel as if it would have been later on in Seinfeld run, whereas season four seems to be where they kind of struck gold. Like they were building up a slow momentum because I was sad enough that I watched a documentary video on it. It was like, Seinfeld was poorly received at the beginning. I was like, really? I genuinely didn't know that. I thought it was popular from day one. You've been watching it, I know, a lot. What, what season did you start in, as a matter of interest? Um, About four. About three That's or four. four. Like, I've been yeah. kind of skipping around seasons, but I ended up falling back in four because my friend and I started watching it, and then we kind of continued from four all the way to, I think I'm on season six or seven, and I could tell there's some, you know, hit or miss episodes, but season four was definitely the one with the most laughs. So, yeah, I'm going to say false for that one. I'm going to say false. You're being very mistrustful. Wouldn't it have been great if it was true? But you're right, really it is false. <laughs> Wouldn't that have made for a really fun episode? <laughs> it sounds amazing, but yeah. I literally imagined like, Arnie walking into like the post office where Newman works mm-hmm. and being like, I'm a friend of Cosmo Kramer's. <laughs> I'm told he was here. Can I speak to him, please? I can imagine, like, you know the scene where they're in the subway where it's Kramer and Newman and they're playing Risk? <laughs> But instead, it's like they're playing on a Game Boy or something. It's like, your stupid machine can't compete with my machine. I come from a future where machines are dominant. Oh. Relax, buddy, it's just a game. You call Skynet game. <laughs> just crushes the Game Boy. That would have been incredible as well. Oh. But no, I, I, I couldn't find anything linking Arnie to Seinfeld in any way. So there we go. It'll live on in my dreams. <laughs> the only place it'll live on to my two of my favourite things. But nope, you were correct. That was that was false as, as could be. Just my poor fan fiction there. Really. And if you want to check out that fan fiction, it's www.wattpad.com <laughs> forward slash. What is it? Signnet. <laughs> Sign <laughs> Soupnet. Soupnet. No soup for you. <laughs> All righty, well, we're reaching the about to reach the halfway point now, and yeah, I'm very impressed. As I as I knew you would, you're, you're crushing it. Well, one is wrong, so I'm going to try and make up for it. <laughs> this has just powered you up now. <laughs> that early slip has just has brought you. You've gone Super Saiyan now. Yeah, it's the Kyle. Re- did you make an anime reference? I did. Are you proud? Are you oh proud? Are you Jill, are you listening? Are you proud? Oh my god, I've got. To, I know. I was going to say, I've got to message Green Jill to be like, oh my god has happened he's turning (laughs) I'm changing (laughs) turning into a massive weep oh my god (laughs) alright so ready for question 5 I'm ready to go. Let's do this. And moving to the early 2000s now. So James Cameron and Arnold Schwarzenegger were both very reluctant to make another Terminator film after Terminator 2. While Cameron could not be enticed back, Warner Brothers managed to get Arnie to commit to Terminator 3 by offering to pay large amounts of money into his campaign to become governor of California. True or false? I think I'm going to win true... True or false? True, trolls, <laughs> yes, trolls. <laughs> I know for a fact that they were going to give him large amounts of money, but large amounts of money towards his campaign directly. Because I know the story behind it that James Cameron and Arnie, like, they both had a talk and he said, should I do it? And James Cameron said, well, only if you get offered a ton of money, ask them for a ton of money. And he did. Well, he got tons of money. But are you saying that money went directly? into the campaign or they're just giving him the large amounts of money no and directly into the campaign would he have even announced that he was running at the time the rumblings, yeah, certainly I think he was, well, he was very active in California politics. And his, his campaign was up and running before, because the election was in 2004. So, like, you know, they, they tend to start these things, like, a couple of years earlier. Oh, of course. He was very much, like, high profile saying he was he was going to run and getting his campaign together at the time of Terminator. Obviously, like, Terminator 3 was his last film before. Spoiler alert, but he did become he did become governor of California. This was his last film before, he, before that event. I'm going to go for true in this one, I think. 
think this is a degree of falseness because, I mean, they did get a paycheck on top of that. That's the thing that's thrown me off here. Are you saying they got a paycheck and they mm-hmm. got the money? He got quite a lot of things, <laughs> I'll say. He did. He got his obviously got his normal paycheck plus some other incentives, but an, oh, a big incentive was that they pledged a large amount of money for his campaign. I know there's that famous fact of in the third film, he funded one of the stunts where they're getting chased through the streets and they yeah. didn't have enough money for the crane to go through the building. So he paid out of his own pocket to fund that scene. I'm going to go with true for this one. I'm, I'm going to be a wee bit positive this time and say true. Feeling some true, some dirty, shady deals going on. Yeah, let's get some truth in here. I'm afraid to say this is false as well. Oh. Arnie did get an exorbitant <laughs> amount of money for this. Like it was 20, his fee was $29.25 million, which was a record at the time. He got a lump sum of $1.5 million for private jets, a fully equipped gym, three bedroom deluxe suites on the location, round the clock limousines and, and bodyguards. He also got 20% of the gross receipts made on like movie theater tickets, like DVD sales, licensing, game licensing. So he made a, a absolute, an absolute ton from this film, but it does not appear, unless this was like some properly shady deal, it does not appear that they gave, the studio gave any money towards his, actually gave any money towards his campaign because I'm I'm not entirely sure how legal <laughs> that is. It maybe is. I don't know, but I'm not sure if there's maybe some laws against, but who knows, maybe they did, but I couldn't find any facts about it, I'm afraid. Kicking myself for that one, because I was leaning towards false, and then I thought, well, it's America. I mean... <laughs> Do you know what? That that is sound reasoning. In fairness, like it's politics, it's democracy. Isn't this how it works? I was going to say, I love how that's my reasoning for all of these questions. The date's not an American. The campaign's in America. American tailors are well known for their sturdy trousers. Yeah, if there's any American tailors listening to this, can you fact check and let us know? I think you've become their, you've become their spirit animal now. I feel as if I have. <laughs> yes, the glorious Red Panda Industries. I was going to say, like, Red Pandas are known for their tailorship <laughs> in the wild. <laughs> Just give them a needle and a thread and they're monsters. The finest artisanal craftsmen that they are. <laughs> I mean, have you have you ever seen a red panda not looking dapper? Do you know what? I don't think I ever have. There's your answer. True or false? <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> True. So we're just past the halfway point. You're doing you're doing incredibly well. It's free right. I still feel you got a lot of momentum here, and I think you're going to smash the back half of this. As long as I get five, that's the main thing. As long as I get at least half of them, I'll be happy. Well, you can't get to five without first getting to three. So you're well on your way. Are you ready then for question six? I am indeed. Let's do this. A proposed sequel to Terminal. Salvation would have seen Christian Bale's John Connor travel back in time to a pre-Judgment Day world, and also would have involved Skynet sending non-infiltrator units back into the past. True or false? Okay, when was this decided? This was before Salvation was released. So they'd kind of like what happened with Genesis as well, you know, they'd kind of plotted out like an arc of films. So this, the plan for the next film was going to be that John Connor would go back in time to the kind of pre-Judgment Day world, and then as I say, Skynet would send, but why non-infiltrator traitor units, I mean T-800s with no human flesh around them and apparently things like hunter killers and I think maybe even some of the tanks and everything. Out of curiosity and I apologise because I feel like a historian asking my brain and being like, when did this come out? But when did the Sarah Connor Chronicles come out? Ooh, that's a good question. I think it was pre-Salvation. Let me have a look. I know it's definitely between Salvation and T3. Looks like season 2 was airing in 2009. That's actually, that's after Salvation, isn't it? Is it? Probably bang on. I'm sure Salvation was 2009, was it not? Yeah, I think you're right. So it looks like 2008 was when it first debuted. The Sarah Connor Chronicles, that is. And then Salvation. Yeah, 2009. So yeah, they're about, about the same time. I'm going to say false for this one, and partly as due to the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Seriously, try saying that three times. <laughs> it's like, oh, what a nightmare. Yeah, mainly for that, but also because, as far as I know, there was a lot of legal troubles with Salvation as a whole. I mean, mm. not including the fact that they couldn't get Arnie in because he was the governor of California and they had to CGI his, again, his leathery husk onto one of the robots, which it promptly blew off. They had issues with the toys where they moulded 
toys of John Connor, but they couldn't show his face because of licensing issues and things like that. I'm going to go with false because I feel as if at this time the Terminator franchise was in legally at least a very turbulent period and I don't see them producing anything else on top of the Sarah Connor Chronicles because I don't think that was well received. I'm not saying it was a bad show because it does have its fans, but it's not like well regarded compared to other media in the Terminator franchise, so I'm going to go with false on that one. So you're, you're thinking false. So you don't think they'd plotted out such a detailed <laughs> script for a, a what would have been a fifth Terminator film then? I mean, they didn't plot a detailed script for this one. <laughs> what makes you think <laughs> can they do it for Terminator 5? Come on. Come on, you Adam. That is, such, <laughs> that is such sound logic. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm afraid to tell you this is true, apparently. Really? Yeah. So, this, so uh, about the time that Salvation came out, 2009, the director, McGee, um, told, told IGN... I should not have taken that drink of water at that point. <laughs> oh, my God. I keep forgetting how stupid his name is. Sorry. It is so stupid. I hate saying it. <laughs> I really despise having to say it. But for the sake of the for the sake of Terminator Month, I'll say it one more time. McGee told IGN that plans for a fifth Terminator film would have been kind of focused around the time travel, which was something that was quite absent. I think completely absent actually from, from Salvation. But would it have brought that element back and Bales Connor would have gone back to a pre-Skynet 2011, which was uh, they planned to release the fifth Terminator film in that year. So yeah, they would have had that. And then also the, the plan was that Skynet would have invaded the past with its machine. Machines, which is so stupid. <laughs> it's such a stupid idea. I've got no words for that, to be honest. I, I keep thinking, how can they make a Terminator franchise even worse? And then McG comes along and says, yo... <laughs> Hold, hold my, my beer. <laughs> yeah. Hold my um. I don't know, brew dog. Or, I I don't drink, so I don't know. <laughs> hold my flaming television. Exactly. <laughs> hold my microwave. <laughs> <laughs> So he, he just wanted to send a whole bunch of Terminators back. Yeah, yeah. They clearly wanted some kind of giant, like, CGI cluster, F-U-C-K. Well, it's almost as if the Terminators could have done that to begin with. Yep. And they didn't. I wonder why. What did he mean by this? That's the question. What did he mean by this? Uh, can we imagine that for a minute? Can we imagine, right? Okay. Can you imagine McGee was was directing the first Terminator film? Oh, and God. like, let's say Carl Reese is the first to arrive. Carl Reese like gets thrown out of the time travel thing and he's like on, on the ground hyperventilating and then he gets his clothes. And then we flash forward to where Arnie's supposed to come out. And instead of Arnie coming out, a giant HK just flies out and like destroys Bob's big burger <laughs> where Sarah's working. McGee, get your grubby hands off this right? <laughs> That's why you weren't invited back, McGee. <laughs> did he do three and salvation, or was it just no, salvation? He just, did, he just did salvation, and for good reason. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for that enlightening fact. <laughs> And you thought Genesis was bad? You see, that, that's the thing. That's one of those facts where I'm like, there's no way that could be. That is too ridiculous. And it's like, nah, it's true. It's like, really? Oh, God, yeah, sorry. Next question, please. But here, just before we move on, what's more ridiculous to you? The outline for the proposed sequel that I, I've just told you there, or the idea of John Connor's skin being grafted onto Marcus's cybernetic body? Or the latter, for sure. <laughs> At least the former would have been like a grand spectacle, like a Michael Bay film. I don't want John Romero <laughs> in a Terminator film getting the skin graft, or worse, like a fucking Sam Raimi film, dancing along the wasteland as he's got the skin hanging off his face. That would genuinely, I think, have been the most horrifying thing I could have seen. I think ever just the, just the idea of that. Oh, yeah, no, that that still holds the gold star for worst ideas in the franchise. That takes the biscuit. It takes the biscuit and more. It, <laughs> it takes the biscuit. It takes the flaming television, and it takes the kids. It's, it's, <laughs> It's so dumb. Why do you make us hate your Terminator franchise? <laughs> it's not us, it's you. You're the problem. Stop ruining the relationship, Terminator. Well, how, I know how to spice things up. What if I grafted my skin onto a metal endoskeleton? Oh, wow, baby. Whisper that in my ear. <laughs> Or better yet, whisper it on the other end of the franchise. Oh my god, this this franchise is so messed up, isn't it? Oh. It's so messed up at points. You know what, I, I've got no shame in doing bad on this quiz, because I'm like, these facts are just insane at times, but sorry, <laughs> please continue. <laughs> 
So question number seven, we're, we're flashing forward to the actual Terminator 5, which was Genesis. So in the proposed sequel to Terminator Genesis, it would have been revealed that Daniel Dyson, Miles Dyson's son, was the one who invented time travel and then sent the T-1000 back to kill young Sarah Connor to protect his, or to basically protect his baby Genesis. J.K. Simmons' character, who was the detective who became obsessed with time travel, his character would have been the one who was revealed to have sent Pops back to protect Sarah. True or false? So, Miles Dyson's son, you said. Mm, yeah, so Dan, Danny Dyson. The Dysons appear relatively briefly. In, That's in, not Dyson. Yeah, so the, it's the older one, Miles Dyson, and his son, like who's like the, the young kid in, in Terminator 2 with the remote control car. In Genesis, I think he's he's the one who's like leading like Cyberdyne and is like the one behind Genesis. But why would J.K. Simmons send back Pops? No, I'm, I'm going to go false on this one. Why indeed? You feel it's false? I'm, I'm feeling it's false here, because although that sounds like something dumb that they would do, you know? I mean, if for one thing, and no offence to J.K. Simmons, because the ravaging effects of time will come for us all, but <laughs> by that point... Bloody hell, poor J.K. Simmons is getting blindsided there by you. Well, come on, he's getting older, I'm getting older, I'm no spring chicken, Adam. This is disguised as, like, my therapy stream, okay? Wow, poor J.K. I'm sorry, Mr. Simmons. <laughs> no, but like that's why he does not speak for me. <laughs> You're a beautiful man. No, he is. He's a silver fox. Okay, that's beside the point. The point is, when was he supposed to send back pops if he was obsessed? He's obsessed so with time you're... travel. Yeah, but what? So he built his own time <laughs> machine, went forward, grabbed a T eight hundred, knew how to reprogram it, and send it back. I'm calling lies on your throne of lies, Adam. I'm calling. I don't know, I never said how it was going to happen. Falsities, I say. <laughs> no, there, there's too many holes. This is a Swiss cheese <laughs> argument. You're crumbling, Adam. I can see you sweating. It may be full of holes, but then wasn't Genesis, is my is my argument, my counterpoint. Yes, but there's holes and then there's a Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> You nearly got me, I will say. You nearly got me with the Miles Dyson thing. Okay, I can see that. I can see little Danny Dyson sending them back and them trying to loop that in in some kind of way. J.K. Simmons wouldn't know how to send back a Terminator. I'm sorry. I mean, he's a great actor, but in terms of his character, no, false. (laughs) False, I say. Final answer. Imagine if I told you this was true right now. Oh, thank God. Please tell me it's not. (laughs) Please. No, you're right. It's false. Oh, thank God. (laughs) But imagine I'd said it was true. Yeah, if you had, I would have had to have written an apology to J.K. Simmons. <laughs> you quite clearly saw the, the massive amount of holes <laughs> in that thing. But, I mean, I didn't feel you needed to go so hard on J.K. Simmons. There, no, you. I mean, he was old air. I didn't mean he was, like, old, old. I, like, I also like how you took a, a veiled shot at him being bald by calling him a silver fox. I'm like, oh. I thought silver fox meant you just had grey hair. Yeah, he doesn't. He's bald. Is he bald? Yeah. <laughs> You're taking all these male shots and shit. No, <laughs> hold on. He's not bald in <laughs> Terminator not. Genesis. You get me to Google J.K. Simmons and Genesis. I hope you're happy. No, he can't, he can't be bald. <laughs> that was like, please, please. This is a Mandela I'm thing. sure I've got a picture of him. He looks bald here. Yeah, he's bald. He's got the hair around his, like, You know, head. he does have some hair, in fact. He has some, but even still, yeah. He's, he's not, like, whiplash. He's not, like, completely bald. Yeah. Like it was in that film. I haven't seen Whiplash. Next to Citizen Kane, I haven't seen it, but I really should watch it. Whiplash is good. I'd, I'd recommend on it. On a completely separate note, <laughs> yeah. I just miss him in these Sam Raimi Spider Man days, to be honest. Oh, is that why you're thinking it? That's probably why you're thinking him with the hair, because of J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah, I think so, because he was bold in the new Spider-Man, the No Way Home one, Mm. because he makes like a couple of cameos in that. He looks a lot older compared to those films that came out in the first half of the century. (laughs) But, you know. (laughs) Anyway, sorry, moving on before we get sued. So I've just gone down a J.K. Simmons rabbit hole now here, but like, there's like some pictures of him in the gym and oh my goodness, the muscles bulging out of his like, out of his arms. You do know like Google are going to be texting me saying, why are you looking up J.K. Simmons gym? (laughs) Google are going to text me. Oh my god! All the all the adverts you're gonna get now. Wait, I just got a beard. It's like a Jack Santa Claus. Jesus Christ! It's actually terrifying. But I love that it. is actually. All I'm saying is I wouldn't want him to love a presence. Not in a bad way. I'm sure he's a lovely guy. But if if like a Jack, why is all this? Why all this hate for JK? <laughs> it's not him. No, I'm saying because can you imagine? It's like the Terminator <laughs> coming. Have you been naughty or have you been nice? 
<laughs> what beef have you got with J.K. Simmons? No, I love the actor. He's great. I'm just saying, I jacked up J.K. Simmons popping into your house in the middle of the night. Would you not tell me you wouldn't be afraid? You call the man ugly? <laughs> he makes fun of him being <laughs> no. bald? You imply that he wouldn't be able to invent time travel? That one I stand by. <laughs> That's the only one I stand by. Oh, my goodness. That's another person who's... We're off the Christmas card list for now. Please, J.K. Simmons, we do love you, really. Please, I'm joking. <laughs> Please, no bully. We need one of the disclaimers, right? Really. Like, the views expressed in this episode do not reflect that's not me at all. <laughs> they reflect the mind of one rogue individual. <laughs> Much like every James Bond film, this one rogue individual. <laughs> Just derailing the whole thing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But yeah, all I'll say is props to him for getting in shape like that because I'm looking at myself and I'm thinking, I am no... I was about to say spring chicken, but no, both spring chicken and jacked spring chicken. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my, my lumpy mashed potato arms and being like, I'm no J.K. Simmons. I know, I'm more like Mr. Potato Head at this point. <laughs> oh, don't be harsh on yourself. You're a beautiful man, Satsuno. Sorry, a beautiful red panda, Satsuno. Oh, thank you. You let the illusion slip. Oh, no, 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 it's all good. Nobody heard me say that. We'll cut that bit out. Next people will think you're not actually a talking sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the illusion. It's Keep like Santa illusion. Claus. Or <laughs> JK like Santa, Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Santa Claus <laughs> bursting into your house to beat you up, apparently. Now that's a film I would love to see. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> although I have to admit, I, I really, nah, actually, I don't think I would like to see that. And do you know why? Why not? Because I think the tone would be all over the place. I would get whiplash. <laughs> but um, bum, ch- anyway, before I get cancelled. Right? <laughs> also, you don't want to see it because you hate J.K. Simmons and everything. <laughs> <you've done. laughs> I'm, I'm new to this, by the way. I've gone in, like, I've gone in to, like, get coffee or something, and I've accidentally stumbled into the I hate J.K. Simmons call. <laughs> And I'm like, who am I? Oh, no. And it's like, I, I feel bad because I've just like thrown a tote bag into my hands. And I've got free pens and free badges. And I'm like, I like free shit. <laughs> then you walked out of the coffee shop and J.K. Simmons was just across the street and he saw you holding your tote bag. It's like, it's not what it looks like. Mr. Simmons, it's not what it looks like, please. <laughs> Some of my best friends are J.K. Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, will I continue on with the quiz here? Please do, because... <laughs> As we're hurtling towards the end here. Because I feel like people are going to take this out of context and I'm <laughs> going to get like a lot of hate mail. People turned up saying, why do you not like J.K. Simmons? It's like, I like J.K. Simmons. We, we, we love J.K. Simmons here. We so do. We, all, all in jest. All in yes. jest. What's the old disclaimer thing we, we put on the episode? Well, for legal reasons, this is for a joke. For legal reasons, there J.K. We go. Simmons, please don't beat me up. <laughs> please don't break into our houses this Christmas. You see, as you ask the next question, I'm going to ask the Red Panda lawyer if he can add like an amendment to the terms like P.S. <laughs> don't beat me up J.K. Simmons you're please a wonderful don't. man with a glorious beard please don't beat me up he'd honour that contract he'd be like well a deal's a deal <laughs> the deal has been made it's like oh no oh goodness me anyway time for question number eight Are you have you composed yourself for you oh I'm ready I'm ready you ready here we go in Terminator Dark Fate Carl's False. truck <laughs> False. <laughs> Sorry, God. throw me off my game here. Everything's false in, in that. In Terminator problem. Dark Fate, <laughs> Arnie plays a T eight hundred in the one known as Carl, and in the film, Carl's truck has the phone number for his drapery business painted on the side. If you were to have phoned this number around the time of Dark Fate's release, a pre recorded message from Carl would play, apologising that he couldn't answer the phone and ending with hasta la vista. True or false? Good question. Why, thank you. I'm leaning more towards false, but that sounds like something they would do. Some crazy marketing. It is something they would do, because, I mean, have you heard of the new She-Hulk show that's on Disney just now? Yeah. They have a similar thing right now, where if you called the number, and I genuinely feel as if we've let back into the 90s with these kind of advertisements, (laughs) because this used to be a thing, and then they stopped doing it, because, you know, they would use, like, websites and things, like civilised 21st century people, and now we're back to these more mobile phones and these rotary phones. It sounds like something they would do. I'm going to lean for true, but I can just imagine you know, you phone it up and he's like, sorry about shooting John. <laughs> <laughs> for John, I will change your curtains. Much like John, I will shoot down my prices. 
and I will throw them away like <laughs> weak Sarah Connor. I, I would buy drapes after that. I'm not going to lie. It's direct, but it's firm. I'd buy the hell out of some drapes if I heard that. I'm going to go for true. You know what? Screw it. I want this to be true. <laughs> You want it to be true. Yes. And it was true. Ooh. So unfortunately, the number is no longer active now. But if you did phone the number at the time, you would get Arnie. Arnie would get that pre-recorded message and he'd end with saying, hasta la vista. Yeah, there you go. Bringing back the 90s viral marketing again. Why are we going back in the past? Oh, wait, it's a Terminator film. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hi, look, I'm Skynet. Howdy, howdy, howdy. <laughs> With that, I've got some good news for you. Oh, do tell. Tsunami. That's you made your you made your target of five. Nice. Oh, thank goodness. Well done with two to spare. Okay, okay. I'm okay with that. You're ready to, ready to bring this baby home? Yep, let's do it. Question number nine. So as we were discussing in the intro to this episode, the Terminator franchise has been involved in numerous crossovers with other franchises, including the likes of Robocop, the Transformers, and Predator. There are also numerous references and Easter eggs to the Terminator franchise in several video games. In Duke Nukem 3D, one level takes place in a foundry. In one of the furnaces, the player can spot the T-800's hand sticking out of the furnace giving a thumbs up. Staring at the easter egg for several seconds will cause Duke to begin sobbing for a few seconds. This was in reference to audiences finding that scene from Terminator 2 incredibly emotional. True or false? I'm going to go with true for that one. You feel it's true? It seems like something Duke Nukem would do. I don't know why, but it just, it seems like that kind of fourth wall, wall breaking, cameo, meme loving shitlord that Duke Nukem is. <laughs> there are a lot of references to easter eggs in, in, in Duke Nukem 3D. In all the Duke Nukem games, affairs but especially in 3D. What Duke Nukem game was that again? Sorry. So this is 3D so this is, this is like the most famous one the most it's like the 1996 one. You know the one that you said you watched when you were young and you're oh yes your mother, mother of course. Displeasure. Yes my mother was not happy with that. Neither was she <laughs> happy with my brother for letting me watch such an obscene game at the time. <laughs> Games have come so far, haven't they? They have. Well, it's grown up so much, the genre. But yeah, I'll say true for this one. You're saying true? Yep. I hate to tell you this is false. R- oh, Duke, you son of a bitch. <laughs> this is why there's no Duke Nukem month. You <laughs> shot yourself in the face. <laughs> there is actually a Terminator reference in Duke Nukem 3D, but it's it's from the first film. You can find this, uh, I can't remember what the level is, but you can find the flattened like endos- the exoskeleton in like a press, like, uh, you know, where Sarah Connor crushes the Terminator in the original one. Oh, yeah. And basically, when you find it, Duke goes, you're terminated. Which, honestly, I think mine's more inventive than that one, but anywho. I, I will say, I was a bit thrown off that he would sob, but... I, I think... when you were like, like, something Duke would do, I'm like, have you, have you heard Duke Nukem before? Well, at, at the same time, I thought it would be kind of self-referential as if, this is the only time I'll cry, kind of thing. <laughs> you know, like, he, he seems like that kind of person that would... Or person, you know, he's a fucking video game character. But, you know, he's a kind of, like, character. He's real him. to me, Dan. <laughs> he was in my dreams, damn it. Yeah, this is why we've never done a Duke Nukem episode because he yeah. sucks balls. <laughs> exactly. And the fabled words of Duke Nukem blow it out your ass. <laughs> Just. <laughs> I totally blow it out of your ass. Rather than cry, Duke was more likely to slap some tits and crack down somebody's <laughs> neck. <laughs> oh, no. See, I-, I laugh because otherwise I would cry. <laughs> Oh dearie me! Anyway, away from away from the disgusting world of cheating, you coming back to back to the Terminator. I was going to say, please take me back to the dystopian hell. Please, let's go back to talking about the, the ideas for sequels to Salvation. Yep, I'm ready for it. Okay, here we go. Final question, and can I just say how how proud I am, how well you've done so far. So I believe in you. You can bring it home. Oh god, am I going to get over the threshold? I don't know. Terminator Two 3D Battle Across Time is an attraction at Universal Studios Japan, and was also previously an attraction at Universal Studios Orlando and Hollywood. This was a mini sequel to Terminator 2 and was written and directed by James Cameron and starred Arnie, Linda Hamilton, Edward Furlong and Robert Patrick. It's the main cast from Terminator 2. The attraction starts with visitors being ushered into Cyberdyne Systems for a promotional event about the company's innovations. This event is then interrupted by Sarah and John Connor who are then attacked by the T-1000. Arnie's T-800 travels back in time to rescue John and takes him to the future. So here's the bit, here's the true or false bit so that was just all the preamble so true or false from this bit after travelling to the future the T-800 destroys his college roommate he and John fight a giant liquid metal spider and it ends with the T-800 finally destroying Skynet for good true or false see I know this is true but what was that first bit about the T-800 destroying his college roommate yeah yeah so him and John have a fight with a T-800 just like the the kind of exoskeleton and once they kill it like Arnie picks up the head and goes he 
was my college roommate. Yeah, this is definitely true. The only reason I know is because I know about the liquid spider, and that was because I was perusing for some reason on the Terminator wiki, like ages and ages ago, and they brought up like the T, I have no idea what it is, it's like the T something, and it is like that liquid spider, and I thought, what the f- frick is that? Is that a Sarah Connor Chronicle thing? But no, it's the attraction so I'm going to go with True. And I can imagine that kind of humour being in, yeah, that kind of... You going with True? Setting. I'm going with True. You are 100% right, it's all True. Oh, thank God. <laughs> that, the spider is called the T1 million. That's it. <laughs> I knew it was like a ridiculous number. I was like, what? I, I did it. I made it across. You did it, you did it. Six out of ten isn't great, but you know what? I'll take it. I'll take my copper medal. Compared to like how I did in the Halo quiz, like you you are a, you are a prodigy <laughs> compared to my shameful performance. I mean, to be fair, you did do amazingly. You brought it back in the Sonic one. I trained, I studied, <laughs> I got into the mind <laughs> of a Sonic fan and it paid off. What's that song from The Rock? It's like, it's about strength. It's about power. I'm gonna train my mind, I'm gonna train the muscles of my mind. But no, I, I'm happy about that. No, you should be. You did really well. To be honest, there was no point. The, the only bit where I thought your reasoning was flawed was the Duke Nukem question where I was like, well, that's that's not Duke Nukem behavior there. But apart from that, all your reasoning was sound. I couldn't fault you. Like I probably would have gone for the exact same logic if I'd been in your shoes. So I think I think you you gave an excellent show in there. Well, thank you. And thank you for putting this together because I actually had a lot of fun being on this side of the quiz and seat. Different, different experience. I, I actually enjoyed being up on, on the quiz seat as well. Like, I mean, it's funny as well. You, you just, you, you want to make as good a quiz as well and you do want it to be challenging, but I'm glad you enjoyed it certainly. And thank you. Thank you for playing along and being a good sport. No, happy to be quizzed. <laughs> So long as it's not about sending flesh back in time in J.K. Simmons, <laughs> I'm more than happy to be quizzed. Oh, the fun we had on this episode. At poor J.K. Simmons' expense, mostly, but the fun we had. Well, this is the end of Terminator month, then. So how, how do you feel? We've reached the end. Bittersweet, to be honest, because it feels like ages ago since we started, you know, hmm. watching these films again, started exploring the franchise. And you know what? It's like how you feel after watching Terminator 1 and 2 back-to-back, like, because as I said, Terminator 1 and 2 are very important films to both you and I. It's the reason we are here now. And it's kind of ironic considering this is, you know, a film series about fate and things that are supposed to be destined to happen and things like that. So it's kind of ironic that that was the film that brought us together <laughs> as friends and co-hosts. And, you know, it is a bit of irony, as it were. Well, what a lovely thing. I never even thought about that, but you're, com- you're completely right. It was fate all along. Fate is what we make it, even if it's sitting beside someone who clearly didn't understand the references. And no, that wasn't you. That was the person to my left. Oh, yes. that, was a, for, that, was, that was a fun, for maybe a story for another time. That was a... Yes, of course. <laughs> Every time we talk about awkward, Do... awkward cinema interactions. Yes, absolutely. So next week we're going to be talking about awkward cinema. Awkward interact. cinema month. <laughs> In fact, the only one I could bring to the table was the people who... Have I ever told you about that? The people who brought their own, like, digestive biscuits to the cinema. Wow, I did. No, they snuck in with a full bag of shopping from Tesco. And they they came in just as the film was starting. And they sat, like, a couple of chairs away from where me and my friend were sitting. Not in the Terminator film, a completely different film. And all I heard in the darkness was a tss, glug, glug. And they brought like a huge like eight pack of coke, and then they brought out a massive pack of digestive. So you're like, can you imagine if they did that in Terminator? So someone would have gone full T eight hundred on them, flung them through the flung them through the, the screen. Oh my god, Sarah Coke can <laughs> <laughs> just bang. That's it. Take them to the salvation screening. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. Oh my god, I tell you, some people do have a brass neck, don't they? Oh they, oh, they do. Oh, trust oh, me. I feel, like the, I feel like the cinema is one place where you see it the most. You're like, my goodness, really? You don't even care now, do you? You don't even care. On a slight tangent before we finish up, but that's what I love about the arguments of, you know, the cinema critics and things like that, where they're like, oh, the cinema experience is very sacred and it brings people together and all of this rubbish. And you're like, yeah, see, unless the screening's relatively quiet, nine times out of ten, you're going to get an earful from the right right in front of you from behind you're gonna get people munching noisily mm-hmm. on things and unless everyone's invested which is a very slim chance you're gonna go away with sticky sneakers and you're like why 
just why would you want to put yourself in that situation and pay like 15 pounds to watch like a terrible film like Ghost Rider 2 I still have PTSD <laughs> about that I still have nightmares about having to pay that amount of money that was back then like in today's money that's probably a billion pounds could have been, could have been worse you could have paid to see both Terminator Salvation and Terminator Genesis I mean I paid to see Terminator Genesis I did pay oh. to see Terminator Genesis but not Salvation I think I dropped off the train at that point for Terminator <laughs> lucky you <laughs> fate is what we make it Adam <laughs> you could tell you were like there's a storm coming <laughs> what is a South American boy saying at our screening in Scotland <laughs> it's like and why is he taking the tickets <laughs> It's like he had his popcorn. I don't, yes. <laughs> I think, oh, I, love it. I think I want popcorn. <laughs> what did he say? That'll be £30 for your popcorn. There's a storm <laughs> coming. Can you just walk <laughs> off? Thank you, Spanish boy. Thank you. He tried to warn us. We didn't listen. And now we're packed to the gills with streaming services. <laughs> if only we listened to that South American boy. Oh, boy. If only. If only. Well, thank you again, Tatsun. Not only for taking part in the quiz and, and watching all these films, but also being the one who actually suggested being the genesis of Terminator Month. So, you know, I, I had an absolute blast doing this. I have, I have an absolute blast every time we do an episode, but this was a particularly special month. So thank you so much for suggesting it and, and prompting us to do it. Honestly, it was a pleasure. And especially after you suggested Sonic Month and you said, yeah, let's do Sonic Month. I was like, yes. <laughs> Finally, I win. <laughs> so, you know what? It was a pleasure returning the favour and allowing you to talk about a franchise that's very near and dear to your heart as well. So, yeah, no, thank you as well for imparting your knowledge and wisdom. My pleasure, once again, my my, my catchphrase for the end of each episode, but my, my pleasure, and I, I mean that, I mean that 100% for this one. Not to say I don't mean it every other time, but <laughs> I especially mean it for this one. And thank you all so much for listening and for being a part of Terminator Month. Hopefully, you know, if you've seen these films before it was nice to reminisce about them and if you've never seen them before hopefully us talking about them and rambling away and doing quizzes and everything has maybe sparked your interest and you, you want to go watch some of them so yeah so thank you all so much and we'll we look forward to seeing you in the next episode so I, I guess all we have to say now is stay safe stay wait did you hear that Satsu? oh 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 god it's the it's the PBs they found us oh god <laughs> they're attacking oh no oh, oh god <laughs> They've stopped. Wait, do you see that, Adam? I do. They're, they're flying away. My God. <laughs> C- can podcast bots fly? They can now. My God, we survived. But at what cost? Well, everybody, after our scary encounter there, I think we can say we've won the war. We've defeated the podcast bots. And so, until we see you next time, stay safe, stay awesome, most importantly, stay hydrated. Stay hydrated.